And, and my, my friend, my friend Jeffrey Johnson, who picked me up from the airport this morning, came in and had a German flag right in front of me. I was most dismayed at that. And I, and I let him know. Because Brazil was beaten 7-1 in the last World Cup. And I'm very happy that Germany is out the World Cup. So let me address that. I want to address that. Mr. Chairman, member of the school board, principal Mrs. Janet Madden, counselor, ministerial official Ms. Wright, other distinguished guests, teachers, parents, well-wishers, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2018, good afternoon. Um, you know, as I said, I actually arrived in the country this morning. I took a flight uh, from Washington, D.C. And my prayer was, please don't let my flight be there. Because I, I wanted to be here. I want, I want to make sure that I, I'm here to deliver, you know, this message uh, to you all. You know, so when I prayed, I prayed, say, you know, that I want to make sure that I'm here to speak to the graduating class of 2018. So I'm here. I'm here because I was meant to be here. And I repeat that. I'm here because I'm meant to be here. I often find myself in strange position in my career. And sometimes it's a bit daunting. I find myself among CEOs at times and other you know, important individuals. And they turn to me sometimes and say, Mr. Hamilton, what do you think about this? What do you think the strategy should be on that? I, I used to be so terrified of that until this important part of my life in which I, 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 I understand the reason why I'm here. I'm here because I'm meant to be here. You, as student, are here because you're meant to be here. You're meant to be in this graduating class of 2018. You are a huge milestone in your life. One of the biggest, I should say. This is the start of your life as an adult. And every decision you make from now on will determine what you need for the rest of your life. What Malvin High School should have keep taught you is not about passing exams. What you possess now with all the tools that you need to make good decisions. You are all now armed with confidence that will propel you to the best career of your choice. Reaching this point should have taught you that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Be bold. Be bold in your pursuits. Right now you should have huge dreams. Dreams bigger than your mind can conceive. And I'm going to talk about dreams later on because I have a foundation called Dream to Reality Foundation. A little bit about me. You know, there's a whole lot of accolades that was just mentioned. You know, but one of my greatest achievement was to be born in the ghetto. It's called Shawnee. Somebody asked me if I could do karate. But Shawnee is a community in between two, two cemeteries. You know, nothing can be more terrifying than that. You have to go home every night to go stories, to roll in cuffs, to all the stories that your grandparents and stuff used to tell you. And that's what you do every day. So nothing in life terrifies me. Because I was experienced. The stories of ghosts, and I've never actually been stopped by them before. So how do I get here? I got here because I put God in everything I do. He's responsible for my success. And for that, I don't take anything for granted. Because it can all be taken away. One of my main purposes in life one of my main purposes in life was to find out what inspired me. And I challenge you to find the same. Whatever inspired you will propel you to greatness. Whatever 
inspire you, would help you to be deep when tough, when it gets tough. One of the greatest lessons I learned was from a secondary school dropout who dropped out of school when she was 14 years old and went to clean houses to make sure that make sure that her family could fend for themselves. That lady was my mom. And this is the lesson that she taught me. In my finite wisdom, as a young individual graduating from Bannings High School, you know, Malvern is the same initial MHS, so I, I, I hold you guys here. I decided that I was going to differ my year from the University of West Indies. Can you imagine, you know, from a, a two-bedroom household with four kids, with more than 80 people living in my house at the time. I got through to go to one of the greatest institution in the Caribbean, the University of the West Indies. And I, as a young individual, made a decision without conferring with my mother to give her my place for the next year. I had no idea what I was going to do with that year. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a plan. I started out by going to soft football games. Um, I remember one day coming home from one of the games. And I came home and saw my bags packed. And my mom said to me, I'm not gonna allow you to be a statistic. You're gonna go to the University of West Indies because that's where I want you to go. So, that's the reason why I'm standing here. But the story, this story continues. We took the bus and we went to University of West Indies. And when we went up to our admission, the university, the university uh, chancellor and the head of the natural science department at the time said to my mom, uh, Miss, we apologize, but your son had deferred her place. She didn't really know that I deferred my place because I didn't tell her that, which was a shock to her at the time. What the professor said to, to her was that there's 30 people on the way to this. 30. This was two and a half weeks into the first semester. The school was already starting. 30 people on the way to this, and you're going to choose two out of the 30 people to get admission because there's no space available. So I said, Mom, you see, we'll have to come back next year. So I had some cousins in Spanish town in some city that we went back to the, to the house. Um, for the night. My mother woke up in the morning and she said, I'm not going home. And what she did for the next two weeks was what taught me the greatest lesson. My mother went up to the university every day for the two weeks. I didn't go. My mother did. At times she put my aunt who was working at the university hospital, the great west the hospital at the time. And she was there just to be visible just be seen by the dean of natural science and say, I'm here, I want you to remember my son. For two weeks, she did that. I, in my finite wisdom, as an 18 year old, sat and watched TV during that whole two weeks and didn't bother to even accompany her to university. But what happened after is a testament to reason the reason why I'm here right now. The Dean of Natural Science made a decision to accept two persons into university, two persons that was on the way to this. One was a girl called Simone Nels. I can't forget her name because her, her father was the warder of, Chan uh, of uh, Taylor Hall. So she had connections. I had nothing. A poor individual from an impoverished community. But one thing I had, that they didn't have. I had a determined mom who decided that her, she wanted her son to have the education that she didn't have. So I was chosen. But well, what happened next was that the Dean of Natural Science, which is Mr. Morris at the time, said to me, son, 
I chose, I gave you the place, not because of you.
not for what they have, it's not about the cars, the big houses, it's for their accomplishments. That's what we should see. Talk to those who inspire you academically, professionally, and spiritually. That's number one. Number two is don't you make a plan. You have to have a plan. Something I learned from my, my, my doctor said, coach. What he always said to me is fail to prepare, prepare to fail. I'm going to repeat that. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And later I found out that was a quote from Benjamin Franklin. You have to create a master plan of your life. And that plan should have short and long term goals. You should, the plan should be specific. Meaning that it's measurable. At the end of the year or the end of two years, you can see where you are. Write these plans down. When you write them down, it becomes real because you can tick them off as you go. The third, thou shalt com commit to be a lifelong learner. And you know, I, 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 I could go to your motto and it says learn to live. So to be a lifelong learner, meaning that you have to learn from every situation that you go through. You know, the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. But the willingness to learn is a choice. It's your choice. So continue to push that envelope. Thou shall embrace values over value. Values, create your value system. Integrity and honesty is the greatest asset that you could have in life. I'm a senior vice president of one of the biggest engineering firms in the world. People, I, I'm trying to understand why people want to work with you. And one of the CEOs said to me, Mr. Hamilton, people want to work with you because they feel they can trust you. It's that simple, that they could trust you. The next thing, the next number five says, thou shall be the CEO of your life. Nobody else will be. You have to make the decision. You are the mastermind. You control your destiny. Remember that. Number six state that thou shall seize initiative. So when we talk about see, you know, seize the initiatives that you will get opportunities. Many sometimes. But you have to be there, be bold, and you have to seize that initiative when it comes. And one thing I say, I say be bold. Ask, seek, knock, that door will be open. Number seven talks about thou shall nurture entrepreneurial spirit. You know, I'm an engineer and I could, I, I could stop there. I could say, okay, I'm gonna be working um, you know, for the rest of my life for, for the biggest company in the world. But I also know that doing that don't give you the ability to do more. You always want to do more to go and help your community. And this is the reason why entrepreneurial spirit is always great. Eight says, thou shalt develop a growth mindset in everything you do, learn. Number nine says, thou shalt overdo it. I don't know if you know this though. We overdo it. Oh, so, you know, you have to be the best in everything you do. If you can be number one, why would you second for being number two? The only way that you can become successful is to know that there is no shortcut. There's no shortcut. And the last, those shall pay it forward. Meaning that you have to give back. Give back to the community that you come from. Give back in mentorship to people who are younger than you that, that, that need the opportunity and need good role models. That's extremely important. And that's what I've been doing in terms of my mentorship program that I'm doing is you have to go back. It doesn't matter if you can walk out and make an impact on a child's life. That's achieving a whole lot. Just think about it and you will get back. Get back a whole lot in return when you do that. Just remember that. So in closing, I want to leave you with something. I'm a big dreamer. And I dream of conquering the world. 
and be remembered by all. And if you are as ambitious as me, you're dreamers also. But remember, if your dream doesn't scare you, then that you mean you're not dreaming big enough. I'm going to repeat that. If your dreams don't scare the hell out of you, then you're not dreaming big enough. I wanted that. I want that to, to set the for a little while. I'm a little boy from Charlotte, from the ghetto. I work for a firm that have 44,000 employees worldwide. It's the biggest company in the world. I'm a senior vice president. In 44,000 people, there's only 1,100 vice president, senior vice president. You have to dream. I would never, never think I would be in this position, but I know working from the bottom and coming up, I always want to be better than my current situation. Dream big. And I want to push it to you and say, class of 2018, let your dreams turn into your reality. Good luck and congratulations to you all.